Hi, and welcome to CPAaccountantsIrvine.com. Let's talk about the parts of an income statement. Part 1. The first and most important part of the income statement is the line reporting sales revenue. Businesses need to be consistent from year to year regarding when they record sales. For some business, the timing of recording sales revenue is a major problem, especially when the final acceptance by the customer depends on performance tests or other conditions that have to be satisfied. For example, when does an ad agency report the sales revenue for a campaign it's prepared for its client? When the work is completed and sent to the client for approval, when the client approves it, when the ads appear in the media, or when the billing is complete. These are issues a company must decide on for reporting sales revenue and they must be considered each year and the timing of reporting should be noted on the financial statement. The next line in an income statement is the cost of goods sold expense. There are three methods of reporting cost of goods sold expense. One is called first in first out method FIFO. Another is the last in last out method LIFO and the last the average cost method. Cost of goods sold expense is a huge item in an income statement and how it's reported can make a substantial impact on the reported bottom line. Here are other factors. Other items in an income statement include inventory write downs. A business should regularly inspect its inventory carefully to determine any losses due to theft, damage, deterioration, and then apply those lower of costs of marketing methods, LCM. CPA Accountants Irvine understands that bad debts are also important components of the income statement. Bad debts are those owed to business by customers who bought on credit, accounts receivable, but are not going to be paid. Again, the timing of when bad debts are reported is crucial. Do you report it before or after any collections efforts are exhausted? Oh, now let's talk about parts of an income statement, part two. Of course, profit and cost of goods sold expense are the two most crucial components of an income statement, or at the least, they're what people will look at first. But an income statement is truly the sum of its parts, and they all need to be considered carefully, considerately, and accurately. In a reporting depreciation expense, a business can use a short life method and load most of the expense over the first few years of a longer life method and spread the expense evenly over the years. Depreciation is a big expense for some businesses and the method of reporting is especially crucial for them. One of the most complex elements of an income statement is the line reporting employee pension and post-retirement benefits. CPA Accountants Irvine shows that the GAAP rule on this expense is complex and several key estimates must be made by the business such as the expected rate of return, the portfolio of funds set aside for these future obligations. This and other estimates affect the amount of expense recorded. Here are some future obligations many products are sold with expressed or implied warranties and guarantees. The business should estimate the cost of these future obligations and record this amount as an expense in the same period that the goods are sold, along with the cost of goods expense. It can't really wait until customers actually return the products for repair or replacement. It should be forecast as a percent of the total product sold. Other operating expenses that are reported in an income statement may also have timing or estimating considerations. Some expenses are also discretionary in nature, which means that how much is spent during the year depends on the discretion of management. Earnings before interest and tax, EBIT, measures the sales revenue less all the expenses above this line. It depends on all the decisions made for recording sales revenue and expenses and how the accounting methods are implemented. Next is parts of an income statement part three. While some lines of an income statement depend on estimates or forecasts, the interest expense line is basic equation. When accounting for income tax expense, however, a business can use different accounting methods for some of its expenses than it uses for calculating its taxable income. A hypothetical amount of taxable income is calculated if the accounting methods used were used in the tax return. 
Then the income tax based on this hypothetical taxable income is figured. This amount is reconciled with the actual amounts of income tax owned based on the accounting methods used for a income tax purposes. A reconciliation of the two different income tax amounts is then provided in a footnote on the income statement. Net income is earned before interest and tax, EBIT, and can vary considerably depending on which accounting methods are used to report sales revenue and expenses. This is where profit smoothing can come into play to manipulate earnings. Profit smoothing crosses the line from choosing acceptable accounting methods from the list of GAAP and implements these methods in a reasonable manner into gray area of earnings management that involves accounting manipulation. It's necessary for managers and business owners to be involved in the decision about which accounting methods are used to measure profit and how these methods are actually implemented. Net income is earnings before interest and tax, EBIT, and can vary considerably depending on which accounting methods are used to report sales revenue and expenses. This is where profit smoothing can come into play to manipulate earnings. Profit smoothing crosses the line from choosing acceptable accounting methods from the list of GAAP and implements these methods in a reasonable manner into the gray area of earning management that involves accounting manipulation. It's necessary for managers and business owners to be involved in the decision making which accounting methods are used to measure profit and how those methods are actually implemented. A manager can be required to answer questions about the company's financial reports on many occasions. It's therefore crucial that any officer or manager in a company be thoroughly familiar with how the company's financial statements are prepared, accounting methods, and how their implementation vary from business to business. For more information and to schedule a free consultation, please visit us at cpa-accountant-irvine.com. Thank you.